that the uh, that there's not more people interested in specializing in the topic because you would think that with even in the subject of anthropology that the bipedalism throughout history and our uh, our own human history is such a critical lack for not pun, pun not intended a critical step in our human history. Yeah. Uh, to suddenly go upright. And maybe you can speak to that as to why bipedalism is such a phenomenon and why that is so rare even now to find tracks in the wild that seem to be bipedal. Why right. that is such a big deal? Well, there's there's been a lot of, uh, of discussion and debate about uh, what was the impetus and and the the uh, sequence of events that led to the evolution of hominin bipedalism. And um, for the longest time, it has been considered a, a, a particular adaptation of the hominin radiation. That was the adaptation that, that set us apart from those uh, species that gave rise to the extant, the living great apes. Mm. Uh, that position is, is not as uh, ironclad and... and uh, uh, you know, defend unassailable as as it was considered in the past, because more and more. First, we blurred the line was some somewhat blurred by the um, recognition of Ardipithecus, a particular mm -hmm. genus, as a hominin ancestor, and and attributing it with the habit of bipedalism when it had a foot that looked like a modern chimpanzee, essentially. With and, the one and toe portion, right? With the divergent the big toe, okay. Um, very thumb-like. I use my hand as a as an analogy there because of the remarkable thumb-like nature of that divergent grasping big toe, and other aspects, uh, limb proportions. I mean, this you stand up the reconstruction. Ray Matterness is a forensic anthropologist, that uh, anthropological artist that did a uh, you know the National Geographic reconstruction of of Ardipithecus, and uh, you put it up in one, one of my slides, I have it juxtaposed beside uh, an upright standing bonobo or, or a pygmy chimp, and they're, they're, they're virtually indistinguishable. I mean, there's differences in the, mm -hmm. in the details of some of the joints and in, in the cranial anatomy, um, slight differences, but in a, and, and so that kind of blurred that boundary. I mean, if we're calling this a hominin, and it clearly is not fully committed to bipedalism. It's a, at best, a facultative biped. That is, it's capable of standing upright and walking, but it doesn't do it all the time. And it, it and unlike us, where we find it very difficult to go down on all fours, mm -hmm. um, we're obligate bipeds. Um, it's not. And so, is bipedal? If it's a hominin, is bipedalism the uh, litmus test for membership in that group, that clade. Mm. Now there have been other discoveries of other Miocene apes, like um, Danuvius was uh, was one that was recently described, which uh, its pelvis and, and limbs uh, suggested a very upright uh, posture, but all the arboreal, long curved digits, um, divergent big toe and a grasping foot, all adaptations mm -hmm. for climbing in trees and yet it it had these uh, these morphologies that were um, uh, seemed to be anticipating if not part and parcel with uh, the habit of standing upright um, so you know was it coming to the ground was it just um, foraging in an upright posture in the trees or what and so that this has always been a little bit of a even when I was a graduate student one of my professors had, had uh, uh, advocated early on that our upright posture uh, probably evolved in the trees as opposed to on the ground. Seems counterintuitive, but it's that upright orientation of the trunk in animals that do a lot of vertical climbing or that hang yeah. from uh, below the branches that have lost their tail and have incorporated that musculature into a pelvic diaphragm to help support the abdominal viscera in that upright posture where they're sagging down into the pelvis instead of hanging beneath a suspension bridge like uh, a, a, a spine. So anyway, the point simply being as a long technical 
um, diatribe there, but it, but it just, uh, this is why it's such a fascinating topic. There is no clean cut answer right now. And we yeah. keep on discovering new fossils that shed new perspectives, new insights, provide new insights into the way in which bipedalism may have evolved and perhaps more than once. Perhaps there was just right. this propensity and, and it popped up. You know, it may be that Bigfoot doesn't share real recent ancestry with us, hmm. uh, but rather it has evolved um, to uh, walk on two legs in a convergent fashion from a more distantly related ancestor, but one that was equipped with some of the same characteristics and found itself in the same types of environments right. that, uh, that our ancestors did. That, that has yet to be determined. I mean, it kind of, you know, it's, it's interesting, fascinating to talk about the possibilities to frame, frame those possibilities within the context of what we know and what we suspect. Yeah. But ultimately, it's going to require uh, examining a specimen. Uh, to get to the bottom of those questions. So, right. It seems like there, it sounds like there's a lot of these transitionary fossil records that are coming forward that seem sort of like a mishmash of in between almost. Like, uh, right. and it's hard to tell then, you're, like you're saying, are these uh, hominid creatures, are they coming down from the trees? And, or is it, you know, I always imagined that it was something to do with leaving the forest line into like grasslands and the need to suddenly yeah. see above, see above the tall right. grass of the plainlands or something like that forces something that's normally down on all fours to suddenly need to look up around a lot. Yes. And then you get this kind of adaptation going on over generations of trying to see above while you're moving. Right. So, there's a whole litany of, of uh, kind of just so stories you could almost yeah. label them as. That's one of them, seen up over the grass, uh, uh, striking out into the open savanna, perhaps to, to uh, 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 scavenge yeah. uh, carcasses of where all the big games are concentrated out there. Uh, that's one. Uh, thermal regulation, when you're out there in the open, not in the shade, the cool shade of the closed canopy of the forest then uh, and, and you're very active then heat dissipation is a is a real issue and so one of the thoughts is that the upright posture exposes less surface area to the sun we've kind of we've lost our this is another possible explanation for losing our covering of thicker hair is yeah. that it provides more surface area for much more numerous sweat glands we sweat more than any other primate Hmm. Um, that watery uh, sweat is responsible for evaporative cooling, especially our head. And, uh, you know, but the top of our head, for the most part, most of us, some of us start to have to <laughs> cover the bald spot there, but our head remains rather protected. The one horizontal surface that's exposed uh, to the sun to a much greater degree with a, a, you know, covering of thicker hair. So there's a whole the whole carrying things is another important element right. carrying resources back to a home base or back to a mate you know who's who's uh, um, uh, stuck at home with the kids so to speak you know yeah. so the male goes out foraging and has to bring provisions back and so, so possibly that's even another... the development of s subtle social structures of having to play a role suddenly right. as a species yeah. to have to stand. It almost speaks the volumes to kind of the anomaly of what it is to be a human and the way that we are and how fascinating that is because you compare Absolutely. us to anything else on the planet and we really don't quite fit, do we? It's uh, a little bit We're... strange. We we are a bit, yeah. You know, uh, there there is there's no question that we're that we are another species of, of primate, but, but yes, our, our intelligence. And then of course, with that, our culture has catapulted us into a whole different set of, uh, of circumstances as, as uh, you know, as evident on the news every, every night and every morning. Yeah. Um, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, I try to stress to my students that we are biological organisms and we like to think of ourselves as apart from nature instead of a part of nature. Yeah. But yeah. yet our, uh, you know, our, uh, um, our circumstances are quite different. We, we have that legacy, but then superimposed on that is, 
are, are the veneers of intelligence and culture and so forth, so social behaviors.